Sponsored by Brilliant. Okay, Apple has just launched a new 13-inch MacBook Pro. And at first glance, it seems more than a little confusing. But here's what you have to understand right up front. There are really two new 13-inch MacBook Pros that were announced today. First, a two-port low-end new MacBook Pro that's pretty much the old 13-inch, but with the new Magic Keyboard and twice the base storage. Second, a four-port high-end MacBook Pro that has the Magic Keyboard, but also newer, higher, more modern specs. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and then strap yourselves in because we're in for one wild ride. I'm Renee Ritchie, and this is the new 13-inch MacBook Pro. Both of them, actually. New 13-inch MacBook Pro, same as the old 13-inch MacBook Pro, at least when it comes to the base design. For all intents and purposes, it's got the exact same chassis, available in the same silver and space gray finishes. Which is fine, honestly, because as far as the naked box goes, I'm not expecting anything new until we get new silicon to go with it. The low-end version has two USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 slash Thunderbolt 3 ports, while the high-end version has four, all usable for data and for charging. But yeah, the two-port version has them both on the same side, just like the MacBook Air, which is easier to engineer for Apple, but less convenient for those of us with plugs on one side or the other. The speakers are better on the high end than the low end, but both of them get the high dynamic range, wide stereo audio, and support for Dolby Atmos that came with Catalina, which maybe won't sound as good as the special redesigned new 16-inch MacBook Pro speakers, but like the new Air, should still startle you every time a new Marvel or Star Wars trailer hits. Also, a three mic beam forming array and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. The panel inside the new 13 inch MacBook Pro is the same as the previous one as well. 13.3 inches and 500 nits of retina density P3 gamut IPS LCD with True Tone, which means it can dynamically adjust the color temperature to match the room for more natural looking whites and grays. There were rumors of a 14 inch version, basically the equivalent of the previous 15 inch MacBook Pro going 16 inches, but this isn't that, at least not yet. Whether that's still to come in the near or distant future, or Apple's waiting to continue its war on bezels until it wins its war on silicon, we'll just have to wait and see. I know that's disappointing for some, maybe many, myself included, but it's also what happens when you get your heart set on rumors rather than releases. What's legit disappointing for everyone is that it still has that tiny 720p webcam, which used to just be annoying, but is now actively a detriment in the age of work from home. Now, hopefully Apple is looking hard at upping that part of their game for the next release. Drop a like on the video so they can see how many of you really want that to happen. Okay, remember when I said it was better to think of the new 13-inch MacBook Pro as two different new 13-inch MacBook Pros? Well, processors are a big part of the reason why. The low end sticks with the same old, very old by now, Intel 8th generation processors. Baseline is a 1.4 gigahertz Core i5 with turbo up to 3.9 gigahertz and can go up to a 1.7 gigahertz quad core i7 with turbo up to 4.5 gigahertz, which I can only assume is to keep entry level prices down with a component Apple thinks is less than stellar these days anyway. So less than stellar that we're getting all these rumors of silicon transplants that I've been alluding to throughout this video. Because the new Intel 10th gens are pricey, especially when you consider Apple only takes the top of the top line chips and to their specs, which sadly doesn't seem to include Wi-Fi 6 this time around, which will be super disappointing to people who've been waiting on the MacBooks to go 10th gen in part for built-in Wi-Fi 6. And this ain't that. Anyway, the 10th gen starts with two gigahertz quad core i5 with turbo up to 3.8 gigahertz and can be configured up to 2.3 gigahertz quad core i7 with turbo up to 4.1 gigahertz. For graphics, you've got Intel Iris 645 on the low end and the new Intel Iris Plus graphics on the high end. Those offer far more execution units and display stream compression, so you get much better performance and can drive up to a 6K Pro Display XDR if that is how you roll. There's also the T2 chip, which handles security for things like Touch ID and makes it way harder to even try to hack the camera and mic, does real-time encryption, and even handles things like H.264 encode and decode when Intel simply isn't up to the task. Apple is doing with the 13-inch MacBook Pro what they've been doing with their other Macs recently, doubling the base storage at the same base prices. So now the low end starts off with a 256 gigabyte SSD, but can push it all the way up to two terabytes. 
On the high end, you start with 512 gigabytes, but can push it up to four terabytes. Sadly, no eight terabyte option like on the 16 inch. These are the typical ultra high performance SSDs Apple's been using lately as well. The ones that are fast enough, it can almost make swap feel like RAM. Almost. Speaking of which, you get eight gigabytes on the low end and can go up to 16 gigabytes, and 16 gigabytes on the high end, and for the first time can go up to 32 gigabytes, though not 64. So yeah, if you want the most, you still have to go with the biggest. The critical update on the new 13 inch MacBook Pros though, low and high end, is no doubt the new Magic Keyboard. Hell, I'd go so far as to say it may be the major reason for this update in terms of both what it ended up being and when it ended up coming. It's the same new scissor switch design with keys that lock out momentarily at the top for extra punchiness as the 16 inch MacBook Pro got last year. It's also rapidly become my favorite Apple keyboard. I know it's not clickety clackety enough for some, especially for a pro model, but it's also not as loosey goosey for me as the old scissor switches. And no matter whether you actually liked or even preferred the feel of the butterflies, so far it's also been far, far more reliable. For me, it really is the best of both keyboard worlds. The new low end 13 inch MacBook starts at 1299 US. That's for the two port eighth generation model, which can be built to order option all the way up to 2,499. So basically the same as before, but with double the storage and the magic keyboard for your money. The high end model starts at 1799 US. That's for the four port 10th generation version, which can go all the way up to 3599 US with all the bells and whistles. So again, more, but in this case, much more for your money. Just more of your money. I'll address the MacBook Air versus MacBook Pro in my next video, so make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss it. But first, I'm gonna really dig down and do the math on all the differences. And yeah, that's thanks to Brilliant and their new complete math course library. Totally saw that coming. It's legit awesome, and with it, you can learn or brush up on fundamentals, probability, algebra, calculus, trigonometry, differential equations, geometry, all of it. For schools, for work, for fun, for the betterment of humanity. Seriously. See, brilliance, brilliance is in taking complex concepts and breaking them up into bite-sized, understandable chunks. You start by having fun with their interactive puzzles, but over time, what you accomplish is just amazing. And right now, we could all just use a little bit more amazing. To learn more, literally learn all the more things, go to brilliant.org slash Richie and sign up for free, for free. Be one of the first 200 people, and you can also level up with 20% off the annual premium subscriptions. Thanks, Brilliant, and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. That's the new 13-inch MacBook Pro, but only the beginning of my coverage. So hit like, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that bell gizmo so we can hang out and chat in the comments for the first hour right after this video goes live. And then hit up those comments and let me know everything, all your thoughts, all your questions, what you want to see me compare, and whether or not you want to see me do a full review. Thanks for watching, and for more on the Mac, check out this playlist right here, maybe here, and see you next video.